Hello everyone, let us continue with the pavilion that we started on last week. Uh, here I have some pre-made grass tuft that is actually from these train stations people and they are perfect for this build. So I'm just taking a few of these and I'm gluing someone in just like they are. Uh, and I'm using my wood glue for this. Actually, I'm using my wood glue for almost everything here. And a few of these grass tufts, I'm just gonna cut them in, uh, in the middle, down the middle. And then I'm gluing half of one of these grass tufts on there. Uh, so they're not quite as big, but still quite big. Then I printed out the print sheet that you will find in the info box below and I'm cutting it um, like you see I do here. This way I can turn one of the pieces over and I can put my double sided tape on here. That is one of my favorite. You can do this with glue but I think the result is a little better with this double sided tape. Then I turned off my recording light and I could see uh, through the pieces of paper where I placed the top layers of these leaves so that I have uh, double sided leaves and these are not a hundred percent accurate so I'm cutting them out one by one and this took like forever After I cut out all the leaves, I mixed a tiny bit of green with a teeny tiny bit of black to get a little darker greenish color and that matched a bit to my leaves and so I painted all the white spots on the leaves, the connections and the places where it wasn't uh, put together right. After that I took some yellow knitting yarn uh, that is very thin. You can use some embroidery yarn as well. And I rolled that around the end of my X-Acto knife. And I think I rolled it around like five, six times. Then I cut off the excess here and I carefully take a piece more that I can use to tie this all together taking this carefully off here and I'm just gonna squish it on the middle so I have this little um, bundle and I'm just gonna wrap this extra piece around the middle of this little bundle making sure everything is neat and nice and then I'm tying it up with two or three knots here and that is a tiny bit difficult but it's possible. Then I am using a tiny bit of my wood glue to glue this middle thing together. The piece that we wind around the first thread here. I am gluing that really nice and then I'm rolling it between my fingers to make sure I have the glue really nice into the yarn as well. And then I'm just gluing it one more time just to be sure that everything is where I want it to. Leave that to dry before you continue. I have this really thin floral wire, but you can use any kind of wire uh, for this. So I am cutting off the end of this one, just below the wrapped around yarn. Then I am uh, gluing a little here on that end so that it will uh, stay nice and firm together. And also because that makes this little wire um, thread here stay inside when I push that up through that little winded uh, thing. And now your little plant is looking like this. And I'm just gluing a tiny bit extra to make sure that everything stays together. And leave that to dry before you continue. Actually I'm going to cut off this little wire in the right length for the little flower. You will be able to find the how-to for this flower on my 
homepage and I will leave a link for that in the info box below. Using a tiny bit of a darker green color, I am uh, painting the top part here, the wrapped around uh, yarn. I'm painting that green and if you don't have the green on the little middle uh, wire, you can always paint that green as well. Leave that to dry before you continue. Now I am going to cut off the loops here on the top of this little flower. You want it short but not too short. I'm roughening up the yarn here with a needle tool to make it look really good. This is supposed to be, um, the flower is called Milkebøtte in Danish. I really don't know the American word for this or the English word. So if you know it, please tell me. Let's bring out the pavilion and place this little thing right here on this corner. I am first of all placing a tiny bead of my wood glue on a piece of paper here so that it is easy to access. And then I'm just gluing in the little flower and then a few of the big leaves and then a, a tiny bit of the smaller leaves so it looks nice and neat. But you can do this just like you feel. You can uh, also uh, leave the flower out and just put in a few of the leaves here to make it look like it is just starting to bloom. Uh, but I will leave that up to you. And here we have the done result of the little flower and I think it came out so nice. I started putting in some grass between the stones and I also want to put in some coffee grounds here and there so it looks like uh, dirt. So what I do is I'm taking a toothpick with a tiny bit of my wood glue and I'm trying to get that between the stones here uh, and you can always uh, take off excess uh, glue here if you want to and I'm using a scenic grass that I'm just taking a tiny bit of with my um, pliers and then I'm just stepping that onto the glue trying to push it into the glue and just leaving it there for um, a few minutes to dry before I dab the rest of the grass out like you see I do here so, so you can collect the rest of this uh, static grass and just pop it back in your container. I'm doing the exact same process here with the coffee grounds. First a little glue, then wipe off any excess and then the coffee grind and pop it really good in there and later you can uh, take the excess out just like I did with the arsenic grass. And that is what I'm going to do with the floor. So from here the floor is all done and I really like the result of it. Now to the roof. First of all, I am cutting out this triangular shape here because we need that for the roof itself. You will find the link in the info box below for this piece of print paper and it should be in the right size for you to print um, so you can use it just straight from the paper like I do. I cut this 
shape out of a uh, two millimeter thick wood and I made six of them for the roof and now I am dry fitting them and connecting them with masking tape. After that I am going to make this bandage that Aura have shown us a few times where you take a piece of um, normal print paper and put a lot of glue on that and glue that over the connections. I started from the outside as I had everything put together with the masking tape. So I glued a tiny bit of glue down the line between the layers of the roof and then this bandage over that. When that was all dry I turned it around, took off the masking tape and then made the same bandage on the inside. And as you will see here in a few seconds, I placed the roof on top of the building. This way I made sure that it was fitting the building before I put on these bandages. So I was having it lying like this before I started with the bandage. I didn't record that as it took a long time, but you can see the bandage here underneath the black paint. I painted the inside black. The outside I used this paper here and cut out six pieces in the right shape for that. And then I placed that on top of the roof uh, just like you see here. I took some wooden strips and I cut them in a length that is a tiny bit longer than the roof pieces themselves. And I'm gluing them on like you see here. But first I sanded one of the corner into an edge so that it would fit nicely under the other wooden strip that I just placed on the roof here. Remember to use enough glue so that it will stay where you place it. You might have to do this in sections, so one at the time or two at the time. I did two at the time so I am making the other one ready here or the last one. First I'm sanding that one, giving a nice layer of wood glue and then placing it underneath the other wooden strip that I just placed and over the first one. I left mine the night over to make sure that everything was nice and hardened before I continued with sanding these edges or the pieces that is sticking out here. So I'm sanding them down so they fit with the other board or a wooden strip so it would look really nice and I do that everywhere I have these corners. I did a few of them to start with so you can see some of them are nice and rounded. I wanted to cover the edges here where the roof tiles are meeting so I have some really thin wood stripes here that I'm using for that and I cut six pieces that fits all around. The top of them I cut into a point so that they kind of meet together uh, perfectly at the tip of this little roof. Then I painted these wood strips and the wood strips around the roof in the um, teal color that I started painting the pavilion in because uh, that's the first layer. And I want to make this one exactly like the pavilion so first this teal color, then the um, craggle medium, and then the white paint. Make sure every layer is all dried up before you start with the next layer, otherwise it will be a mishmash and you won't like the result. This craggle medium makes small cracks in the white paint, and if you don't like the small cracks and you want them bigger, you can put a glaze over there. So I actually ended up with a matte varnish or glaze over all this white paint, making the crackles a bit bigger. I'm not showing that I am giving uh, this the glaze, but now I told you. <laughs> 
After the glaze is all dried up, I am using my wood glue again to glue on these wood strips here to the edges of the ceiling or the roof actually. So I'm just making sure I don't have too much overflow of my glue placing the little strip here and then a masking tape over to keep it in place. I am not um, squeezing the masking tape over it, I'm just kind of letting it uh, grip where it grips. And then I'm just gluing all of these small strips of wood one by one onto the little rooftop. When the glue is all dry, I take off the masking tape. I mix a tiny bit of water with some dark gray uh, paint. And that is going to make kind of a aging process on this little roof. I am using a big fluffy brush to brush on some of this mixture. And you can see it's very watery. And I am just using a towel that I can dab off some of the uh, paint again so it's not all black at the end but it gets these kind of spots all over just take your time and continue until you're happy with the result I want to make kind of an uh, edge for the roof to be able to go into the uh, pavilion so that it's kind of staying in place when I'm not taking it off. So I am marking these uh, wood pieces here for the length that I need and I'm going to make six pieces of these. I have all six pieces now and I'm using my masking tape again to make a dry fit and I will dry fit this inside the top of the pavilion. This was a bit tricky but it was the only way I could figure out how to do this right so that it will fit perfectly into the pavilion when it's all done. I finally got everything in place and now I am making these paper bandages again. I cut a piece of printing paper out in the size that I need for one of these connections. I did not put masking tape on this last connection so I'm starting with that one and placing this little uh, bandage over the connection here. Then I am going to remove the masking tape for another connection and I'm going to place that on the middle of the wood stick so the stick will stay where it needs to stay and then I'm gonna make another bandage on that corner. So I do that in all six corners. This next step you have to be really really careful because you only have printing paper connecting the pieces of wood here. But I am releasing the masking tape and lifting up the wood so it sticks out a lot on the top. So you can see that right here. And then I am popping in a tiny bit of glue in these corners here to make sure everything will stick together. Make sure that you do not put glue on the pavilion itself. You only want the glue in between those wooden sticks we have here at the top because we want to be able to lift this frame up when it's all dry. So you need to glue all six of these corners and leave that to dry. Make sure it is really, really hardened before you continue here. When that was all dried up, I made sure that the masking tape was not in the way of gluing on the top 
of these pieces of wood. So I placed a nice amount of glue all the way around here and then I placed the roof on top of all this. Made sure that everything is touching right so that this strip of wood, this frame of wood will glue to the roof. When the glue is all hardened, I am using hot glue all the way around on the inside to make really sure that this frame will stay in place. After I did that, then I am going to place some of the band-aid on the outside connection here. You might not need that, but I found that it was more secure. I like to glue everything really nice together, so I'm sure that it will stay. And it also makes the connection a little neater to look at. Then I painted the outside of the frame black. And I painted the inside of the frame in the same color as the little pavilion has on the inside. I'm going to show you that right here. When that paint is all dried up, you can now place this roof as kind of a lid into a jar and it will fit together nicely. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and I will see you next week. Happy crafting.